Welcome to this video about machine learning and its applications in developing intraday trading strategies. Now we've all heard of chat uh, GPT and I bet you're wondering how AI and machine learning can be implemented into trading. I'm unbiased trading and I've been working on kind of different uh, systematic and data driven trading strategies um, and let's get right into this. What is machine learning? Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence, so AI that enables computers to learn and make predictions or decisions without explicit programming. It allows machines to learn from data, identify patterns, and make decisions without human intervention. You can use machine learning to input a specific data type and then learn the optimal route to reach an end point or learn different patterns in the data in the case of unsupervised models. In trading, for example, this is generally takes the form of predictive modeling which attempts to anticipate the next candle based off the previous five or 10 or however amount inputted. Um, now let's look at the steps of using machine learning for the purpose of creating a strategy and identifying patterns in a setup. So part one is data collection. The first step is to collect the necessary market data that will be used to train the machine learning model. This can include historical stock prices, trading volume, and any other financial indicators you may want to include. Maybe, you know, I haven't actually run this experiment, but if there was access to um, dilution, uh, dilution or earning uh, data, you could actually run a machine learning model based off that. To some extent, you could argue, um, is there any patterns in it? But it would be an interesting experiment. Now, the data should be a comprehensive, uh, covering as much as historical data as possible. So I ideally, the longer time, the better. Um, it is also important to make sure that your data is clean and free of errors. Now, due to the availability of reliable historical market data um, providers, such as Polygon, FMP, Alpaca, and others, this is much easier to perform currently for people with some knowledge in coding and data engineering compared to you know, even a couple of years ago. Now, this is the most crucial element to remember. Terrible data equals bad machine learning. Junk in, junk out. So this is always a part where I pay the most attention, ensuring that data is verified in a variety of methods. A classic error that might be found is different formatting of numer numerical data, such as some will be in millions or thousands and so on. Now, finally, divide your data into three sections. You want training, optimization, and test data, uh, which is like out of sample data. This will help you to observe how you um, set up criteria and how they perform on data that isn't in the model. This will be the ultimate indicator of whether the current system criteria are working or if they are potentially overfitting or underfitting the model. Part two is feature engineering. The next step is to extract useful features from the data that will be used as an input for the machine learning model. The process is known as feature engineering. For example, in the case of a trading model, features can include the moving averages, relative strength index, Bollinger Bands, or even simpler features such as gap percentage, open high, low close values, um, or even um, if the bar just closed green or red for a consecutive amount of times. Features should be chosen to be based on their relevance to the trading strategy and their ability to generalize to new uh, data. This is crucial, as mentioned on Twitter, degrees of freedom is how many variables you have in your setup such system. The, the aim is always to make these as low as possible with a minimum generally recommend of, of around three. However, this does depend. We want to make sure we don't train our model to overfit on new market conditions, and we want the best chance of achieving similar results on the testing data compared to our training data. The features or degrees of freedom we select are usually based on whatever setup variables we anticipate will determine profitability in the setup. However, if the model's objective is just to discover patterns in the data, as in the case of volume forecasting, this can change. Now, there are many different types of machine learning models to choose from, each one with its own strengths and weaknesses. Common models used for time series prediction include random forest, uh, gradient boosting, and LSTM, which is long short-term memory networks. It is important to select a model that is appropriate for the specific task and has good performance with the type of data being used. Model selection is a crucial step in the process of creating a machine learning model overall for a trading strategy, as the choice of model can have a significant impact on the performance of the model. Here are some few things to consider when selecting a model for a trading strategy. One is the type of problem or you know, type of setup. The first thing is to consider the type of um, setup that the model will be solving. For example, if, a, if the goal is to just predict stock prices, then a time series model such as LSTM networks or a um, profit model 
would be more appropriate than, let's say, a supervised classification model like random forest. Two is data characteristics. The next thing to consider is the characteristics of the data that the model will be using. For example, if the data is highly correlated, then a linear model such as linear regression might be more appropriate than a decision tree model. Model complexity. The more complex the model, the more data it will require to be trained and the more uh, computational resources it will need to make predictions. It is important to balance the model's complexity with the amount of data available and the computational resources at hand. Also, this goes to the point of if you were to implement this um, model, you would need it to make predictions very fast. So the less complex the model, uh, to some extent, the better, um, unless you have huge infrastructure, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you don't. Um, so you definitely want to try and keep the complexity down. Performance is the last one. Finally, the model's performance should be considered specifically when it comes to time series problems. Measuring performance based on the accuracy or precision of the prediction is not always sufficient. Other metrics such as mean absolute error and the mean square error should be considered. And as I stated before, maybe prediction time um, and you know overall accuracy, accuracy is one of the common ones if you're looking for a time series model. Now it's worth mentioning that these are just examples and not an exhaustive list of all the types of models you could try for a trading strategy. Um, it is important to try different models and compare the performance, which funnily enough is normally the last thing after you complete a machine learning model is to provide perspective and compare results to other models and see if you're missing something um, with the data. Now the second part is going to be coming soon, so before you decide to click away, let me just quickly go over what we'll be um, going over in the second part, um, just so you know to come back <laughs> and watch again hopefully. So we'll be going over training the model, backtesting the results, and potentially deploying the model and how that process would look, and then just overall concluding thoughts on is it worth it to do a machine learning model in the trading space. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, please like and share it with anyone else who might be interested.